Hello, Augies and friends worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. While this is a little bit off the beaten path, I thought you might find it interesting. I had to replace the compass on my aircraft recently, and of course, having done so, what am I going to do with the old compass? Well, the answer is, take it apart. So I did. Uh, first of all, let's talk about compasses in all sorts of craft. You've probably seen pictures like this of compasses in ships. Ships have got a lot of metal around them, and it tends to really move that magnetic field around. And so that's why Lord Kelvin invented the so-called binnacle that has two uh, balls there, steel balls, and those balls can be moved in such a way to uh, basically make the compass think it's surrounded evenly by metal so that it will read correctly. Now look at the size of those balls that are on there. They're huge. That's because ships are huge. Well they have the same thing in aircraft compasses except the little bits of metal are really tiny. So let's take a look at this compass that I've taken apart here. Um, what I've got is the case. This is the, the back case. This is the little, uh, there's a pedestal mount for it. Uh, this is the piece that's on the front. And so you can see through it. Here's the compass itself. I have not torn it down further because it's got uh, uh, special fluid inside. That special fluid is called uh, alcohol. And the reason for the alcohol is it won't form any, um, you know, green stuff, bacteria, anything like that. It is completely antiseptic. And this right up here on the top is where you open that up. And you can just see it on the inside here um, to refill that. And then the parts and pieces come out the front. Now down here at the bottom is a little assembly, this little assembly right here. And this little assembly goes in, let's see, this way. And what happens is, I want to show you this because it's really impressive what it does. This right here, you turn for east and west, you turn this one for north and south, you turn this one. Note what happens with these. This one right here turns a little gear, which turns this, which is directly under the compass. And there's a little tiny piece of metal right there. Now compare that size of metal with the one on the ship. It's very, very different. Now this other one over here comes over here and turns... Um, a 90 degree ratchet and it's got the little piece of metal uh, right in here. Now what went wrong with this is that, well first it would barely move over the years. So the date that is stamped on the, co the compass is uh, November of 1966. This is the little stand that it stands on Compass sits right here. It's held on by a single screw. Uh, this right here is the light for the compass. It's got a little light that goes inside so you can see it in the dark. Now, what makes it interesting here is that uh, the aircraft was uh, assembled around 2007. So, in assembling avionics for this airplane, um, obviously used. <laughs> Uh, avionics were used. This thing right here was uh, so hard to turn that I thought maybe it wouldn't turn at all. It was essentially frozen. Um, when I tried turning this screw right here, uh, which is supposed to turn this one, you can see it does does turn it a little bit, but otherwise it's stripped out over here. 
Now, the reason it became stripped out is because it was just so hard to turn uh, the cross piece that it caused it to strip. The brass isn't the strongest thing in the world. Um, so I've ordered another one of these. Believe it or not, they're available. With tax and shipping, it was about $80. But this was what was keeping the compass from calibrating. So whereas you calibrate the ship's compass by moving those gigantic balls in an aircraft, it's just so much smaller, you calibrate a compass by moving these tiny little pieces of um, ferrous metal uh, iron back and forth and it causes the compass to work. So this slips in here so that those little pieces are right underneath where the compass is in here. A little hard to see it, but the uh, compass floats in alcohol there. And those are the adjustments. And then screws go in to hold it in place. And then there's this is a little light bulb little tiny light bulb. I tried lighting it up, but I think it's a six volt bulb and I gave it 12 volts and blew it out. That was stupid on my part. I should have started with a, a, a variable power supply. So um, that's what's in an aircraft compass. Now the compass that I ordered is a little different. It's an upright compass and you can see it much more easily. And instead of using um, alcohol as the motion damper in here uh, it uh, uses magnetic eddy currents on the thing so it's a little bit easier to use it has been installed was installed last saturday and we will calibrate it it has the same kind of calibration method here as right here so that's how compasses are put together um, if you've watched this far I would like to encourage you to subscribe to this channel and click like. Uh, subscribe is your vote of confidence for this channel. And also, if you would like to help support this channel financially, you can go to decastlercom slash support and see if there's something there that might strike your fancy. Um, this is just a sort of a semi-amateur related one. We've got another... Um, amateur related one uh, with the weather station. I changed out my weather station. That will be coming up. Also, we've got some reviews of some receive antennas coming up too. So until we next meet, 73.